I'm Rinda from Hardiness Approach, and today is my cooking day in my kitchen. Now, we have always had the focus of eating healthy foods, but I've refined my focus a little bit more, and I'd like to tell you just a little bit of a story. During this last, oh, maybe three months of the six months, I've had a really intense job, learning all kinds of new things, and a job that required major multitasking. And with other things coming in, like somebody sending a message through a text, or a message, or an email, or a phone call, or any number of things, I don't know what, I'm constantly coming at it. This needs to be fixed, you need to do this, make sure this is done, do we have this ready? All of that put together is what's called multitasking. I have always prided myself on multitasking. I thought I was great at it. Come to find out, I'm pretty lousy at it, and most of us are. It is also not an attribute we want to exemplify. So one of the things that I'm doing is trying to heal my brain because it really seriously took a beating. I got I was brain fog, I couldn't focus, I made mistakes, I did all kinds of things like that. And so I'm using a book, actually a book that, um, called Healthy Mind Cookbook. Uh, it's written by Rebecca Katz, K-A-T-Z. I will leave the link down below and you can link to it and order it if you'd like to through our Amazon. Rebecca Katz um, always, almost always had a recipe that was used in my semesters for my holistic nutrition. Today I am cooking one of her signature dishes and one that is uh, super healthy for the brain. She, it was given to me like my first semester I think um, and then you can even Google it because she shares it with everyone and it is called Magic Mineral Broth. So for Magic Mineral Broth, we have a, an array of vegetables that are going to be in them. And as we go through these vegetables, I'm going to tell you why they are important for our brain and what, and what they have. So we're going to start with carrots. Everything that goes in here is going to be very rough cut. It needs to go into a 12-quart container. So I'm just going to take these and rough cut them. We're not going to worry about the ends. I wash them. Um, we're just going to throw them in to the pot. So carrots not only are good for eyesight, but they're really good for helping with your thinking skills and helping your brain. They are rich in vitamin K, which also boosts the brain. So those of you who are on blood thinners. You're going to hear me mention several things about vitamin K today, and you might go, oh, I could, shouldn't eat that. Oh, I shouldn't eat that. Oh, I shouldn't eat that. You don't have to change the way you're eating if you're on a blood thinner. You just don't want to say, I'm going to eat this huge pot of broccoli, and that will counter it. But if you're normally eating these foods, you don't have to change what you're eating. That's what most of the doctors and nurses say now. So, by eating carrots, you are increasing, let me, let me get this right, you're increasing your memory and it's also good for heart health. But I'm going to focus in on all of the things that have to do with memory. So thinking ability and memory. The next thing we're going to put in there is garlic. You all know how good garlic is. Garlic is like the major booster of everything. Only thing I'm going to do is take off the mud off of my garlic that I grew from my garden so that it's not in there. We don't need to put mud in there. And I'm going to rough cut them in two, cut the very end off, and throw them in. So garlic helps keep your brain very sharp. It um, also helps boost your iron metabolism to go into the areas of your body that it needs to go to so it can function. This also, by doing that, boosts your memory. So these things are very important to memory. And you need eight uh, bulbs of garlic. So that's what's in there. And I'll put the recipe down below so that you can see it. It's also, I believe, on my website, but I'll have to go check on that one. But it will be down below. 
The next thing we have are leeks. Leeks and carrots, I'm sorry, leeks and onions have the same um, good goodness to them. They are both really great for focus and memory. Uh, focus is what I was having trouble with when I was multitasking so much. And so I'm going to just cut them in two like this and throw them in. On the onions, these are onions that I grew. I'm just going to cut them. I'm not, and this makes greatness in the broth. So I'm not going to worry about taking that off. It wants two large ones, and so I'm putting in four medium ones because I don't have large ones anymore. And I can see that the part of this is starting to go bad, so that one's coming out. Had an abundance of onions this year. It was fantastic. And I'll put my leeks right there. So the onion family and the leek family are fantastic for memory. They are good for focusing attention. They are also good for vitamin K, which enhances the memory. This is parsley, flat leaf parsley. And this is a full bunch. We're going to take a half a bunch and put in there. Now, it is also really good for learning and memory and cognitive function. Um, let's see what it says. It also is packed with this flavonoid called I'm going to put it on the screen because I don't know if I'm going to say this right. Lutino, lut, lut, <clears throat> lutino, lut, lutinolin, and it's linked to memory improvement and learning skills. It's also good with vitamin K, high in vitamin K. Potatoes. Now, those of you who are diabetics, you might go, oh, we can't do that. And that may be where you're at, but potatoes get a bad rap. Um, they are, yes, they are good carbohydrate and they improve your cognition tests so that when you're taking cognitive tests, you improve with that. Um, they protect against cogni uh, cognitive decline. So those of us who are getting older, that's something we want to make sure that we are doing everything in our ability to improve. So those all go in there. Sweet potatoes. These are ones that I grew. This recipe actually calls for one that I am not able to get. I was, I've always been able to get it, but I live in a small country town and I can't get it. And so it is called a garnet um, yam. And so I just put a little bit of extra sweet potato in. Um, and that's what she said to do. If you can't find it, just do the best you can. But sweet potatoes are good for mental energy and to increase your learning. They are loaded with beta carotene. You see the, all the yellow and the orange in it. And this allows you to, wait for it, focus and have better memory and concentration. Okay, so, um, oh, I didn't get down what celery was, and I know celery is really good for you, so I'll have to look for it later. But celery, we're just going to rough cut this and put it in. As you know, any broth is way better with celery in it, and it wants you to have a full bunch. Oh, I love the smell of celery. I grew it this year. It was really fun. Okay, now. I looked all over my little town and was not able to find allspice berries. I've had them before, I've ran out of them. I have now ordered them online and I will put the link below so that you can order them yourself. Um, I, I make this broth a lot and I know that it calls for those so I'm going to just make sure that I have them. So the link below, in lieu of that I am going to use some ground and so I'm just going to put it in. But let me tell you how good allspice is for you. First of all, it's from, it's the dried fruit from the pimenta, pimenta, not pimento, pimenta tree from the Central America. And it's loaded with vitamins and minerals. And it is really, really good, high in magnesium, which increases your cognitive ability. So there's that. 
We're also going to put in some pepper. We're going to put 12 or so pepper berries in there and two bay leaves or so. And once, let's, then there is the secret weapon. I use this in all of my broths, whether it's chicken broth or any broth. It's called kombu, K-O-M-B-I. It's, this is the one that she recommended. I've never used this kind before. Um, it, it's a seaweed. You can see it there. It's a black seaweed. You want to put one of those in, and it is all the difference between whether your broth tastes wimpy or tastes rich and healthy. It is full of trace minerals. It boosts your memory, and it is full of potassium and vitamin C and, and D. Okay, so inside of this pot, I have everything loaded in there, and I am going to put in eight quarts of water. So, I have that, and see if I can do this, see if I can do this without making a mess. There are six quarts of water in here, and the reason I know there are is because I tried to see if that pan was big enough, and it wasn't. So you can see I'm right up to here. This is going on the stove for a minimum of two hours. I like to cook it longer, low and slow. The longer you cook it, the more your flavor. When this is all done, we'll come back and do the rest, but I'm gonna just let you know that we'll strain everything off through uh, a metal strainer so that we don't, you know, melt plastic. And all the vegetables will go to the animals. Um, she says, discard the vegetables, and I'm like, no, I have animals. And so this is such a rich cup. You can just, you can use it for any recipe. You have, it'll make six quarts, or you can just sit and drink it like a tea and just feel the goodness come in. It's a great thing to make going into the winter so that you have it to just, you know, as a, as a rich cup of goodness. So we'll be back when it's done. It is a new day. So I cooked this probably for about five hours. And um, then I let it rest for an hour before I stuck it in the refrigerator so that it didn't heat up my whole refrigerator. Um, and now I'm just gonna remove the stuff. It's easier for me to dip it out than it is to turn this big thing upside down. And so I'm putting it here so that I catch my juices in there. And take out all of this good stuff. And I want to show you what the kombu looks like now. Ooh, that's what that looks like. Like I say, I, this other stuff that I have used has always been um, just like more solid and blackish, um, grayish, whatever. Um, I used this one this time because that's what the person that recommended the recipe used. And so I figured, hey, why not make it exactly like they said? So I'm going to take all of these out, and my animals are going to get these. And then I'm going to be left with this really rich broth. And it's supposed to make six cups. No, six quarts. And I, um, I don't want to can it. I'm tired of canning, for one thing. And I don't know if canning is going to... I think it would be fine because it's just going to cook longer, but I don't know whether it would take some of the nutrients out. So I got some of these, um, they're just called stack and store mainstays from Walmart, three something for six three quarts, no, three quarts, and then, so I got two sets of them, and I will just freeze it so that I have it to eat, to use for recipes, um, when you need a broth, for sit down and relax when you want something like nice and warm after you've been outside for the winter and you want to come in and you want to drink some of that, just sip it and I am going to 
be able to dump this. And I just wanted to show you. It also says to salt it afterwards. I actually, when it had been cooking a couple hours, put some sea salt in it. It's not overpowering. Um, I have made it before where I've made it too weak. The longer you cook this, the stronger it is. This is perfect. And I cook this about four and a half hours. I think two was just not enough. Um, and she even comments on that. So, and this, I just drank it with it chilled and it was still good. So I'm gonna go heat it up after I'm all done here, sit down and relax with my cup of magic mineral broth. So I hope you try it, not only for being able to have broth to cook other things in, and you can see it's not a meat broth, it's a vegetable broth, but also to warm your body and most of all, to help your memory, your mood, and your cognitive uh, function so that you can feel better in this crazy world that we're living in. Thank you.